Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Tri5 Guy. Uh, working on wiring today, American Auto Wire. But, uh, please like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell. I really appreciate it. Guys, this is not going to be a how to uh, install a uh, American Auto Wire um, harness in your Tri5. There's plenty of people doing it. Uh, I do suggest you go uh, to Minehead Garage. Uh, Chris, nice guy, he does an install on a 55 Chevy, pretty much the same, guys. Uh, he's got a big block in his car that he's doing it, but pretty much for a big block, small block. This video is gonna concentrate on an LS-powered uh, 57 Chevy. The differences in the engine bay for the wiring, because when you buy these kits, there's nothing specific for an LS, right? You have to buy add-ons and stuff, so forth. But so this is gonna to pertain to just LS sort of stuff, but with one addition. This is a carbureted LS with an MSD um, LS series uh, MSD controller and the uh, differences in the alternator and so forth. So uh, this is, you know, if you need to look at stock installation, uh, of a uh, American Auto wire and a Tri Five, head over to uh, Chris there at Ironhead Garage. He's got a he's got a good video that you guys can check out there. Um, a good guy, so check out his stuff. Also check out his build. He's done a really nice fifty five gasser. So uh, anyway, let's get into this. Uh, with most of the wiring's already uh, pulled through, and um, let's get into the nitty gritty of what's needed to run either carbureted or fuel injected, but specifically just for an LS. <sighs> you probably can't see it, but up that upper left-hand corner, there's a hole that you pass the wiring through for the engine compartment. We put a rubber grommet in there, but it's right up the top there. You probably, you won't be able to see it, but you can just see the wires uh, running into the uh, into the engine bay. And it's behind the, uh, just trying to get it focused here. And it's behind the, uh, the um, hood hinge assembly there. Um, and they're the wires here in this group right here. Um, and then they go to to selected areas. This one here goes to the uh, to the coil, but we don't have a coil, so that's going to go to the uh, MSD, and a few other things get done. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all this in a uh, into a sheathing, and then uh, probably get it to behind the engine over here, and then they'll go to wherever they got to go. Part of the J wiring schematic here, if you want to call it a schematic, but here it is here. So that's part of. Uh, the, the whole engine bay sort of stuff. So we're going to start with that. Uh, pink goes to the ignition uh, coil. If you had a coil, we've got an LS, so we're using the MSD. And we might, if there's any corrections, we'll make it towards the end of the video. But uh, we're pretty sure that the, the pink ignition feed wire goes to the MSD. Um, and then we've got the wires going to the alternator, the starter motor, all the centers, uh, the uh, water, oil uh, we don't have a distributor so we're gonna work all that out electric chokes involved with that and yeah so we'll get all that done some tack wires yeah let's let's sort that out now all right guys so that bunch of wires you see hanging near that uh, hood spring there I'm gonna put that in a, a, a wrap a wiring wrap and I'm gonna go straight across the back to about halfway and then stop it there. So I'm just gonna get a piece from about that long. And then from this point, it's gonna go say to the alternator, to oil, you know, oil pressure sending units, water pressure sending units, uh, uh, the coil wire will be in there and I'll I'll explain what's gonna go with the uh, with this coil wire. Guys, this is the uh, wire sheathing we're using. Uh, it's approximately uh, 30 inches long. Uh, that'll go from behind the hood, uh, the hood hinge uh, to about the middle of that um, indentation there in the firewall. And then from there, individual branches will branch off to where they're going to go. Put the wire inside the sheathing and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so there's a the sheathing there. 
goes underneath the uh, uh, booster, goes to the back of the engine. You can just see it there. There it is there. It comes out about halfway, and then it'll branch off to the individual places where it's got to go. I know it's hard to see, but that's a good thing, isn't it? You're not supposed to see it. It's supposed to just blend in with everything else. Next thing, we're going to move on to the uh, Mega Fuse. Here's the Mega Fuse, right? It comes uh, as two pieces here. You get these two uh, fuses here and this plate here. It's called a Mega Fuse Jumper. It just jumps between these two and makes it one sort of uh, one unit, right? But they come individual, these two things. They kind of like click together, as you can see on the back here. See how they kind of like slide together? And uh, yeah, you just put one Mega Fuse on one side and the other on the other side, and this jumper goes underneath both of them. So put that all together, and I'm gonna mount it where I drill these holes over here. You see on that side, it kind of like doesn't fit anywhere else uh, neatly. Uh, you can't really put it under there. It's gonna be hard to get to, and there's not a flat area, but that's fine right where it is. It's close to the battery. We're gonna jump that from here to the battery. So that's the idea of this for the fuse. So uh, I'm gonna mount that there and I'll be back. All right, guys, that's temp to uh, put in the place there. So it'll go from the back, the wire will go from the battery uh, to the mega fuse. It'll power this up. Hi, hey guys, just a quick mention that this brown wire right here is for your alternator. It goes to the, um, the alternator here. This is an LS series uh, alternator. It's a CS130D, and you'll see that there is four um, look pins in there. They're all identical. Some LS starters, uh, they're, uh, those pins there are uh, different sizes, but this one here in particular, it's off a truck. It's a CS130D, and uh, you require a special plug for that, or you can buy one for American Auto Wire, and I believe the uh, part number is... American Auto Wire, part number 500-295. Uh, so that brown wire gets connected into that uh, brown wire that you see in the picture and there's a uh, Resistor in line as well that you've got to put on pretty easy. The instructions are super easy You'll see it. I don't have it at the moment. We don't have it. We've ordered it in uh, So that's uh, the only wire that gets uh, connected to the alternator The MSD requires you to run this power wire this red wire here that's connected to the plug here um, let me zoom out here. Uh, there it is there. So it's connected. This has, it needs its own power. It needs its own 30 amp relay. So we're going to get our coil wire here, uh, which is the ignition feed for the coil. And that's where we're going to get the power from. We're going to hook up our relay to that. We're going to put it on the firewall up here, and then that wire will be connected to that. That makes any sense and so here's a relay we're just gonna hook it up into there and uh, run a 30 amp relay uh, for that so uh, yeah in other words you can't run that directly to a power source it has to be off a relay guys so just remember that if you ever run a LS series um, you know a, a MSD box uh, the instructions say that you need to run it to a relay and a 30 amp. So red wire to the relay, pink wire, which is our coil wire from the harness, from the uh, American Auto Wire harness, that gets connected to that. And uh, we'll, uh, I'll show you that in, uh, in a minute here. While we wait for the uh, alternator wire to come from American Auto Wire, we're gonna hook up the uh, 30 amp relay that's going to get done now but at the same time i'm going to start doing the front wiring kit here now they say that you should start and finish each section so you don't get confused or lost or forget to do something but when you're waiting on stuff and you want to keep going well i'm going to do it so we're going to start with this i'm going to open up this package and then we're going to go from there so we're going to do the front lights next guys i forgot to mention this Underneath the dash, I like to do a, a, a loose sort of wrap with uh, electrical tape, as you can see. 
Uh, it's still very um, flexible. It's still, you know, you can still move it around. If you kind of like do it too tight, it becomes like a, a big thick cable and it's hard to manipulate uh, into, into where you're gonna go. But I only do it inside the vehicle there like that. And I use some sheathing on the outside. I'm gonna hook this connector into the connector, the matching connector in, in the uh, harness under the dash. I'll be back. Hey guys, earlier I tried to show you a hole in the firewall that I was running uh, my wiring through a grommet. Here it is there. So, uh, and you can see that sheathing made its way all the way back there that I put on earlier. See it there? Um, yeah, I just pushed it back until it was close. I didn't think it would go through the firewall like that, but it did, which is a good thing, I guess. So, there's that connector for the front uh, lighting. It's all hooked up. Obviously, just you just got to just got to match the connectors pretty easy there it is there now here's the end it's only about 10,000 foot long so well I haven't even got the end but I'm going to get the end of this wire I'm going to get it through that hole next so uh, bear with me I'm going to get it through it's going to go into the engine bay again and, uh, and I'm going to pull it through all right be back so there you go I've got it in the uh yeah, there you go uh, I've got the wire pulled back, it's in the connector, and it's going through the firewall grommet. Uh, I've got the uh, connector tucked up underneath there, plenty of room to get around stuff into the uh, into the fuse box to service it, do whatever. But uh, there it is there. Alright, let's go back in the engine bay. Alright guys, these pliers are from American Auto Wire. Be smart to buy them. And so are those. All right. There's two different, two different sizes and some of those special connectors, you have them, but you can buy them from them or you can rent them from them, which means you buy them and then send them back and they'll give they you charge you some, not all of it, but. And just keep them. Steve's gonna crimp that on there. Now this is gonna get attached to the mega fuse and that's what it looks like. Yeah, that's kind of the crimp you're looking for there. It's beautiful, hang yeah. on. There you go, it's beautiful. Really good crimp. It really is. Yep. All right, now this is going to get attached to the uh, mega fuse. It's going to get attached. See, this, he just done the H on here, and it gets attached to that. It's getting attached to the lower bottom. Get attached to the right hand bottom fuse box there for the mega fuse, yeah. and that's going to get ran inside the car. It's the main power for the fuse box. Yeah. yeah. So this is what powers up the fuse box. Mm -hmm. So we're going to run it inside now. These, this terminal and this terminal are your power going through. So, and you can fire this either way. Actually, all four, these two terminals and these two terminals, you can reverse them or however you want to do it. I'll explain that in a second. But so you can put power in this side and power out, and then this relay is turning that on. So it doesn't matter which side of that, it's just simply a switch. These two here are the coil that activates the switch, and it's uh, ground on one side, power on the other. Uh, the, uh, so you actually can wire those either way. I think the 86 side, they're numbered 85 and 86. That's always the same on all coil or all relays. But I think the 86 is usually the ground side and 85 is the power, but you actually can put them either way and they'll work just fine. So that's generally the way it goes, right? You always put the, well, yeah. typically you would put the, the black on the 85 or the 86? 86, I think, so, if I remember correctly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, where would the red wire go, Steve? Uh, the red wire, uh, you can put, like I say, on this side, it totally makes no difference. It's just a switch. So mm -hmm. you can put the incoming hot and the outgoing to whatever it is you're powering yep. on the other side. But you can literally switch those either way. It makes absolutely no So our, our MSD red wire that I said earlier goes to the back of that one. You can. And right. that's probably how we'll do it. And we'll just run power into the from the battery over here on this side. And then as you put power to the coil that's in there, it's just a little magnetic coil it moves, it's magnetic, it moves the switch inside and, and either, now you can make these, you can buy these coils. Some of them are these relays that have, like uh, this one's got four pins on it, some of them are five and they have mm -hmm. like a normally open or normally closed. So you can have this to where it's normally on unless you turn it off with the coil or mm -hmm. you can have it off and turn it on, on with the coil. coil. Yeah, so I've you can that. do that either way. But this one, most of the time you'll find these are just uh, uh, off till you power it. And this one, we're just going to use the, on the American Auto Wire has a switched power from the ignition switch that normally powers the coil. 
course this thing has this MSD setup on it. So we'll use that wire to just power up the coil on the relay, which will power a wire from the battery 12 volt uh, through this relay to the MSD box. Good, gotcha. Yeah. All right, and obviously guys, uh, when we put that relay up, we made sure it was ground uh, nicely and uh, grounded to the relay and uh, bolted, we actually bolted this on, as you can see, so there's plenty of ground. All right, we'll be yeah. back. So Steve, a attached the um, another red, what gauge is that, Steve? Uh, it is 14. 14 gauge wire, it's on the um, right hand lower um, terminal, I guess. Yeah. And that's the same wire, as I mentioned earlier, that goes to power up the uh, fuse box in the cab or inside the car, and that's gonna to go to the uh, USET 87 terminal, yes. which is the, the one behind on the firewall yep. side uh, of the relay. Um, this one here, the, uh, at the uh, left hand top one, this one goes to the uh, solid, uh, starter motor. Yeah, right. it's power. It's p basically power for everything. It goes down there. It's Yeah, that's where yeah, it gets yeah. power to the mega fuse. It powers up yeah. the mega fuse. And then you got you got this uh, top right-hand one, and this goes all the way across to here, and it goes to the alternator. Yeah, so basically what you got going on here is, of course, the battery sits here. The battery cable, it will hook, it's hooked to the starter. So you're using the starter uh, is the connection to the battery. And then the uh, this wire is picking up on the same stud on the starter as the battery cable. So now power's coming out of your battery, going through the battery cable down to the starter on the same stud is this wire. It's coming back up to here. So this is like your main power distribution. And then these are two, they call them mega fuses. There's a jumper in here that jumps two sides to one. But uh, that way your battery, your big main power source is fused. And this is just simply uh, your supply to the system coming off the starter. So, but this is basically fuses protecting the whole power supply. And then uh, of course, as he mentioned, uh, this is your alternator. So your alternator is also basically fused from your battery in case something gets shorted out in a big way. But uh, then the, this wire here, we will actually here, we just don't have one, but this is gonna get a snip job and a fuse holder, inline fuse holder. Yeah, I forgot about that, put yeah. to it, so just as a protection, because it doesn't, it's because it's coming off the main power supply, uh, it, in my opinion, it should be fused. So we'll put a, we, you don't- Inline some, fuse? Yeah, it's not a good idea to have- Will that fit in the sheeting? Yeah. yeah. We'll or we'll it put it right up here next to it or something. Yeah. But anyway, we'll, we'll put a fuse on it somewhere here, just around the town here after a while. Yep. Get a, fuse holder and sl slip it in there somewhere. All these loose wires aren't gonna be like that. We're gonna put them in, in sheathing and so forth mm -hmm. so it looks neat. Yep. All right, let's move on. All right guys, all them wires are hooked up. The pink wire is the coil wire that comes from the American Auto wire um, kit. Uh, let's go into that terminal over there. And then you got the red skinny wire, which is uh, that red skinny wire you see right there, tip of my dirty finger, that goes to the MSD box right there, or comes from the MSD box, and the other red wire is the one we said earlier that comes from there. So they're all hooked up, all grounded, and then you've got a couple of wires over here. Uh, one of them's the temperature wire, which this temperature wire here will go down to the temperature switch, and this one here is for the choke. It'll come under here and just connect to the choke over here. Over here, That's all standard. Um, all that stuff there, the uh, temperature sender wire, uh, which is this one here. And this one here is all standard American Auto wire stuff. There's nothing um, special about that. And uh, hook up to here. Eventually hook up to this right here. All right, let's move. All right, guys, so, someone, the previous, whoever played with this thing, um, had put both the uh, grounds for the coil on the one cylinder head. Uh, you're not supposed to, you can't do that. You're supposed to have the uh, right bank with the right bank coil wire for the ground and left bank for itself. So we're gonna take one of them off and reroute it 
to the um, to the other cylinder head. Make sure you've got the respective coil wire ground to the right cylinder head. You can't just piggyback them like that. LSs need good grounds. I think super critical. I think uh, they've got a. Uh, I, I remember there's a ground on the back of the cylinder head on these things, right, Steve? Yeah, basically, you're. If you think about it, you got uh, these coils. They're on the valve cover, but there's a rubber gasket between the valve cover and the head. Mm -hmm. And then even between the head and the block, there's a head gasket, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a good ground for the coils to use, and they're super sensitive to having a good ground. So this wire right here is directly going to the, your whole system over here. So it's got its own like functioning ground that you gotta make sure is going somewhere that's got a really good electrical contact all the way back to, to the uh, battery. The people are gonna say, well, hey, you know, it's, 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 it's grounded, it's, but they're both grounded on, on, on metal. What's the importance about ha making sure it's on that side? I've always wondered that myself. Well, it's just where it's just where, like I was just saying here, this stuff's all isolated. So, just because you got a ground connected on that side of the engine doesn't mean it's a good ground over here because you got rubber in between lots of things. Right. It's like having a good body ground. You you ground the battery cable to the engine, but you got rubber motor mounts everywhere. So mm -hmm. you might probably don't have a good ground to all your right. body stuff. So. And LS is we we come across that Steve. Remember that coil oh, had yeah. coil wire. Yeah. We couldn't get this running, and it was end up being one wire that wasn't, uh, it wasn't grounded right, just yeah. one little wire, and then as soon as we touched it on metal, the thing fired right up. Now, I believe that LS has got a ground on the back, a ground on this side somewhere as well, and all these other miscellaneous grounds for the, the finicky, finicky sort of wiring system on the LS. We're actually gonna put another ground wire on that side as well mm. and then you said we're gonna the actual fuse box ground that goes to the body we're gonna run that to a ground on the outside as well uh you need to ground ls engines uh, it doesn't matter if it's fuel injected or not uh that's what controls the the ignition on that and that's important that's grounded right this is your tack wire uh, which the white wire will splice into this one coming out of the MSD. These two tie together. This is your uh, alternator generator or alternator charging. It basically fires your lamp in the dash. So, yep. But it hooks up to. We got a connector coming for this uh, CS130D alternator, and uh, then it has a jumper that comes off of this uh, charging terminal. That, of course, is hooked straight to your battery. So it gets 12 volts to excite the alternator and get it charging. And this is your wire that runs back into your... That's just your idiot light, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. And that uh, white one, again, is your um, coil wire. Tack. Uh, sorry, that is your tack wire that goes to the gray yeah, wire that's coming out of your... MSD. The MSD LS series. Yeah. And these two Oops. are connectors that don't get used. They're like a boost controller and a two-step or whatever yep. if you want to use boost. Cap so them off. We're just going to cap those off and they'll tuck them down in here somewhere. But All right. That's it. This is the main system ground. So you got a main system ground and a right and left head ground, which they yep. ran to the Three side. grounds just off that box, right? Right, Steve? Yeah. 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 Don't want to leave that. <laughs> those two-step and... Um, Two-step wiring there that you you really don't need. Boost control uh, and two step. Yeah, boost it's control and two step uh, wires. Steve's uh, he's just put some heat tape, uh, some shrink wrap over them, um, so they don't, you know, get. Uh, we'll tuck those under. Yeah, we'll uh, tuck them up nicely. Get rid of them out of the way. Yeah. So then we only got the two wires here to deal with. Exactly. We have to wait for that part I just said, and uh, we're going to deal with this here pretty soon here. Uh, we're getting there. We're just about ready for. Uh, we've, we're just about done with the conversion aspect for wiring for this particular application here. Okay, guys. So we're gonna we're ordering this part right here. Uh, it's a alternator adapter kit for the alternator. Um, it's uh, the reason behind this is what Steve. Impact on the charging control or the voltage regulator 
part of it too. And if you don't have the resistor in there, it overpowers it and it will cause the fail. The resistor is inside here that he's talking about. So this is pretty much needed. There's also another one that you can buy. And this is no good right, Steve. This is, I mean, this is all right, but it's not for this application. Yeah, I mean, they make two of them. And the, uh, so this one is kind of a, that's kind of a generic mode. You still have to run another wire in that connector yep. uh, to, to uh, power the alternator, the exciter part. This is, again, this is just a light. That's showing you that resistor that's in there. So you can buy this one, but strangely enough, this one is more expensive than the one that we've got coming that's a plug and play. This one, you have to connect everything. You have to splice this in, mm. still got to put the other wire in, all that. Yes, it works and it's an okay kit, but it's even more expensive than the one that we're ordering that's got the resistor, resistor already, yeah. already inside it. It's got a connector on the other end of it that has a connector in your harness kit that directly plugs into it with the jumper to go over to your hot post on the hot So side. that connector, that is for this other one. So, so the connector that plugs into here comes in the American Auto Wire. So I'm just giving you a heads up. Don't buy 500, 540, buy 500, 295. That's the correct one. Um, it does what it's got to do. Uh, it's the right part and we've got that coming. All right, guys, the Mega Fuse um, is all done, all done up tight. We've got all this, uh, we've got the cylinder head, um, uh, the, sorry, we've got the uh, coil, Grounds all on properly now. On this side, we've got that. This is the ground for the uh, MSD box here. That goes on this cylinder head here. You've got to have this to a negative uh, gr a battery ground, so it's right on the battery ground right there, right? So we've got that to, as close as we can to the ground on the battery. Here's the other ground for the other coil pack down here. Hang on, let me get my finger in here, right here. That's the other one. And that's got sheathing in it as well to protect it. There you go. All the sheathing's done all, everywhere. And it's an aftermarket shifter, and they're all pretty much the same. They use, uh, this has got, if you can see, there's two micro switches. Uh, the top one is the for the reverse position sensing for the uh, backup lights. Uh, and then the bottom one is a neutral switch. So. These things are really painful to get adjusted. So I'd wholeheartedly recommend that you do that. Even out on a bench is the easiest way to do it, If you get, especially if you got a new shifter or you put a new car together. But, but these things are painful. So just a continuity check on a meter. If you can hear that thing chirping. Uh, so you can check it. Like I say, the bottom one, this is in park, so you should have continuity to the switch. And you do. And then you need to check that to where Park and neutral both should have continuity through the switch so it'll start in safe positions only. And I've checked this one, uh, but it can be painful to get it to where it's got a little dimple plate back here that pushes that micro switch. So uh, if you go through, you need to go through and make sure all of the gears, it does not have continuity, but uh, neutral and park do. And you have to, these bolts that go through here, you have to adjust the position of that switch to get that, it's painful. And then throw this other switch on top, which is another, it's the same exact switch, but it only has a dimple plate to, for the switch to be on in reverse. So again, just make sure that you have it when you are supposed to have it and don't have it when you're not supposed to have it. So it doesn't start in, in a gear or something like that, but it also starts when it should. Now this one, so as you can see, uh, the reverse switch right now has nothing, but if you go into reverse, so that's going to turn your backup lights on when you go into reverse. So, but it's an easy check. Way better to have this stuff checked out prior to, you know, like putting carpet in a car or anything like that. Just mm. make sure it's all right. Or when you try to start the car and you find out your neutral switch isn't working as it should. So this, this right now, it's exactly the way it should be. So if you've got a problem and it won't try to crank, you know, it's not here. But that is a common problem or common area to have lots of problems in. So just be careful with that meter goes a long way when you're doing this kind of stuff. Yep, definitely. And the purple wire gets hooked up. From the ignition switch has a wire that comes down. Right. One thing that is a little bit different about this is it doesn't have, if you had a points distributor, uh, your starter solenoid it has two small wire connections on it. The, uh, there's one that gives it, uh, it bypasses up to the ballast resistor downstream side where the coil hooks to it. 
and that gives you full 12 volts when cranking. Uh, now, like a MSD or any kind of aftermarket, you don't run a ballast resistor. So here we don't need that because it's right. going to have full 12 volts all the time. But if you had a, if you had a uh, points distributor and a, you use uh, the yellow uh, wire. Yeah, you'd use the yellow wire and you'd have that 12 volt wire going from your starter solenoid up to your coil side of your ballast resistor because the ballast resistor cuts it down to like eight or nine volts, but you don't need gotcha. that. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, the shifter's sort of like, it used to be sitting down here, um, had a horrific hole right, right there. So I welded that up before and got rid of that. And now we've got a tiny, nice little discreet hole there. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't. But uh, it was always had the holes there. That's yeah. that's a position. The mounting holes were there, but, but the... the rest of it was butchered up. And yeah, so all right, moving on now. Uh, I think we're going to hook up the um, solenoid wire uh, to to a um, a uh, what do you call it? Ignition switch wire. Oh, you have to put a spade terminal on it, or no? It comes with this um... block. Hang on, let me find it. All right, guys, see these two uh, purple wire here? They're the uh, neutral safety switch wires. We're not going to use them anymore, and Steve will tell you why. <laughs> yeah, so the, the harness uh, brings all that power and stuff over there into the center, and your neutral switch connection, or actually it's the purple wire that runs down to your star starter solenoid, is part of that. But we, because this is a floor shift, and they don't know if you're going to have a column shift or manual transmission or whatever. But anyway, we went ahead because the wire worked really well for us to jump into that purple wire here with our neutral switch we talked about earlier. But then as we move on across, you've got under the dash here, you've got provisions for whatever kind of neutral switch you're going to run. So you, the switch would just simply be in here. So now that we've already went downstream with it, we've got to snip these and just simply tie them together. So we'll use a butt splice on them and uh, heat shrink them and then we won't do that. But that's something you possibly could run into and maybe not catch exactly what's going on with it. But And the reason they're close to the steering column is because the uh, neutral safety switch is generally on the column itself, correct? Yes. Uh, if... Uh, like the aftermarket columns, if it's a column shift, yep. uh, it'll have that feature in that. But of course, this is a floor shift column, and you got that shifter, you know, setup that we showed you earlier. Then now over here, you just simply tie these two together. Yep. So, and if you've got a manual transmission, same. Yeah. Now, one thing we've just been sitting here talking about that'll be a follow up point in a later uh, part of the video is the reverse lights. So mm -hmm. the backup lights. So yep. we know we've got a, we're going to have to, we'll be dealing with something similar there because of, they can't make these harnesses fit every possible application. So they've done, but they've done a really good job. They give you tons of wires and the wires are all labeled well and all that. So it's just a matter of working your way through these little things, but okay. that's, that's one you'll have to deal with. So uh, as Steve mentioned just now, uh, the purple wire that comes from the solenoid comes, uh, you know, it comes from the starter motor, which is, you know, over here. It goes in the engine bay. Uh, sorry, scratch that. Uh, the purple wire that's connected to the solenoid comes through the tunnel here. Comes into the back of this switch here. From the switch, it goes back up into the fuse box, and that's our neutral safety switch. Uh, there goes Steve, he's chopping off that wire and um, yeah, we're going to join them together because uh, we've already got it here, right? And here are the four connections here. These bottom two are for the starter solenoid. These other two are for the reverse lights. So uh, that'll be part of the, um, the rear harness, I believe. I'm pretty sure we'll check that. All right, guys, we put uh, together this um, cluster. Um, it's all on, it's all together. I can't really tell, it's not lit up, but you can see it a little bit there, see it? Uh, all together. This is made by this Intellitronics. Intellitronics, there, there you go. Um, it's about $450 odd, $475. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can get a Dakota Digital, you're better off doing that. You spend hours putting this all together. Nothing lines up. It's, in my opinion, and uh, it, not worth it. 
No way. It says American made. I tell you what, I, I don't. If it's American made, I should really go back and uh, re um, uh, redesign it. The instructions are pretty shocking. Uh, we had to call about three or four times. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's together. And it's absolute, in my opinion, not worth it, the money. It really isn't. Right, we're just about ready to fire this up for the first time. Um, yeah, all right, Steve. Let's have a look. See if it works. Oh, yeah, here you go. Nice. Yep, so see how it's in kilometres? Because this thing's going to Australia. So it's in kilometres, volts. We need to charge our battery. It's got no oil pressure. The motor's no good. It's got plenty of fuel and 22 degrees. So beautiful. That works. Do I recommend this? This thing, as I said before, uh, Dakota Digital, how much is that? And their cheapest Dakota Digital. Uh, digital. Uh, around 1100 I think. And this is? About 450 450 So double the price. If you want to screw around yeah, putting you know this what? in. I said that, but uh, Dakota Digital's, this looking version of it, maybe is cheaper than that. I think maybe it's like 800 I haven't looked right. at one in a while. Actually, guys, um, you'll see the price coming up here. It's just over six hundred and forty-one dollars for a drop-in unit, compared to the uh, one that we were supplied. It's a no-brainer. It's worth it to get the Dakota. The Dakota Digital is a straight drop-in, right? You don't have to do what we had to do today. Yeah, it's modular. I mean, everything just goes in the pod here, so it's really easier. But I mean, the screw holes that hold the uh, the circuitry board in the back didn't line up. Uh, yeah, it was just some parts that were misstamped, wrong screws. Okay, here's another thing. Yeah, it comes with these um, uh, like oil pressure send, uh, sender, and look at this. I didn't, we didn't, I didn't even get to put it on. It snapped as I was doing it up. It wasn't even, it wasn't even tight yet. I screwed it back out by hand. We screwed it by out by by hand. It just snapped right off. It's just chintzy. All right, it says it's made in America. Listen, I don't believe it. Okay. I don't care. It's we'll see not. If this thing dims. All right. So it's got a wire that hooks to it that hooks to your parking lights. That when it sees the parking lights on, it says, "Oh, it must be nighttime." So we'll dim the gauge panel. So any of this kind of stuff you can check just to make sure it's wired right prior to getting it up in the dash and having to mess with it. it's a good thing to do. So just be careful not to ground anything out and yep. blow up the circuit board. So as you can see, it's dimming. Dimming good. Yep. So should be good. All right. One more thing, it should be okay. All right. Just a quick thing, not to, anything to do with the wiring. Um, I screwed in and also epoxied the um, tack strip in the front there. That's so the headliner can, you know, something to nail into the uh, the uh, into the tack strip for the headliner. So usually from factory, they were stapled in. Uh, the fix is uh, to to uh, use a staple gun, but you got a windshield. So what do you do? You can epoxy it and screw it because you can get a drill in there. I mean, you probably get a a rivet gun in there, but geez, I just put screws in there, epoxy, and uh, that will never move. So, you know, a bunch of wiring we did. The uh, shifter's in position here, as you guys, I probably said it earlier in an earlier video. I ran the, we ran the wiring to the back. Here's the wiring for the, uh, hang on, here we go. Here's the wiring for the, uh, the uh, dome light. That's all in, that's how it runs up the side. Just all the wires to the back here. Same sort of thing, I just do a light twist on it, like a tape twist. And it goes to this side and across to the other side. So we wired in everything in here. We're waiting on this part here for the uh, this um, uh, connector to the alternator. And we need an adapter for the oil, uh, that oil pressure sending unit that I'll, I had in my hand just before. That's gotta be what pretty. What do you think about them? I reckon they look pretty nice. Look good. 17s. What were they against, Steve? 28, 17? Yeah. 28 inch tall, 17 inch. I reckon they're pretty nice, probably fives wide. Yeah, look good. Actually, it does look good. Yep, there you go. All right. I started running the uh, headlight wiring. Now, the headlights, these headlights, Steve, they're, have we got them? Yep. These headlights go, uh, the parking lenses don't go in the grill. This has got like a custom grill. Uh, so they're going to be in the uh, in the headlights. So we're going to run them um, into the headlights. It's going to run underneath this radiator support to this side. Here's all the uh, um, wiring you get for the headlights. 
they have to be modified. They're the same as the coupe. Mm -hmm, they're the same headlights as Don't the coupe. Same, huh? uh, yeah, so they're parking lights, indicators, and headlights. Well, they can parking. be a daytime driving light. You can wire them. These, this, this outer eyebrows, or whatever the heck you want to call that, they can be yellow or white. So you could wire them up to where... They're daytime. They're daytime running lights, and then make them blink for uh, turn signals. Hmm. But it just it requires extra wiring to do that. Whether it where it doesn't, if you just make them function as a regular turn signal. So, but this is your parking light, and then and turn signal. What are these ones for? They're high and low beam. That one there. Yeah, they're funky. Anyway, this is what it's getting. I'll give that back to you, Steve. Yeah, we'll just get now. I'll put that in there. I'm gonna put the headliner in there soon. Uh, oh yeah, I put the tack strip around the back there. That's all on. Now a lot of people. It's funny. I see people putting a tack strip in there. That is. That's where the teeth go. The teeth panel, the uh, headlight retainer panel, front and rear. That's where that goes. There's no. The only place it's got tack strip is in the middles. That end and down there and this here, on a four door. All right, guys, um, that, so that's coming up pretty soon. I've got to hurry up because I'm going in a month back to Australia. So uh, not back to Australia. I'm going on vacation to Australia. All right, so anyway. All right, guys, so you can see that the water temperature is just out of view. There it is there. You can just see it shining now right there. Okay, so that's all hooked up. Also hooked up with the uh, oil pressure sender hooked up there. Uh, one of them's hooked up to the signal wire. One of them's hooked up to the ground. It goes to the cylinder head over here. That's all down, done. Now we're working out this fantastic uh, headlight. Uh, headlight. Putting all new connectors on to go from here to that other side. They cross over, obviously, the high beam, low beam. Um, you know, daisy chains over to this side. It's going to go underneath the support. Um, and we're going to... And it's a headlight or a drill bar of yeah, so it's got a, there's no grill bar like the original 57's had it. So everything's, like I mentioned earlier in the video, everything's going into the headlight, the indicator, the parking light, the high high beam and low beam. It's all going. So it's not your traditional wiring hookup for a headlight in a Tri-5. So a lot more complicated and making sure it's going to be right. So that's where we are. What else have we done? Uh... Yeah, it's getting there slowly. We're gonna need up. We're gonna finish off all the wiring. We're gonna uh, do all the horn stuff, get that done, and then we're gonna move back. Um, you know, work our work ourselves from the front to the back of the car. But it's getting there. I'm gonna take a picture of this. I'm taking a video right now. So it's got this little thing in here that appears, it's got like a little filter thing in there. I guess it's just a vent for the heat to get out of there. Oh, yeah. But huh. that hits the back of the bucket. I won't let the bucket sit down. So a hole saw, that will let that sit down over that. And then there's two of these. Uh, this one had to be, it was like an eighth inch off to fit the notches here on the back of the light. And then this one just had to be like a 16th wider. So it was side. a few little mods, yeah, really not that nothing bad. serious. I mean, it's a 10 minute job to, to make it all work, but. Look at that, beautiful, fits like a glove. There it is, so it sits on these, it's got these tabs mm -hmm. around here it sits down on, so nothing major. And uh, that should clear the, I think it clears the main bucket. Yep. Just fine. Oh so. yeah. Should, looks like anyway. should anyway yeah and of course these things have got a uh, your normal high beam low beam ground and then uh it's got these areas these two white sections here and uh one of them red is, parkers yeah red is white which we're using it for parking and then green makes it uh yellow so it's hooked to the turn signal so when you got parking lights on these will be on but white and then when you hit the turn signal that's your orange it overrides the white to blank yellow so nice yep. anyway it's uh you know it's uh, you like them you like them you, you like them like you don't you don't uh, owner's preference i guess so uh i don't know if i've made a video of what we did with the wiring but 
all the wiring's all done. All, all these wires here, are, um, I'm pretty sure I did a, but they're, they're those two wires that, what Steve was talking about, the parking and the indicator on this side. There's a chrome rim, ring that's gonna fit on that as well. There it is there, and that'll sit on that and screw to the- um, To the adjusters. To, yeah, to the adjusters. And uh, yeah, oops. To, to the justice and that all holds on. And then the, the bezel ring goes on after that. Yeah, of course these two wires, originally the 57 has the grill bar. It's got the parking light turn signal in right, that yeah. area there. But since we're using these headlights and it's got a, it doesn't have a grill bar and it's got a custom grill in it. This stuff all had to be re pigtailed and yep. in through with this wire harness through the same uh, uh, covered. Yep, Rubber which covered. is behind the fender. Yep. It goes uh, through here. That's And usually there's a ground here, right, guys? There's a, a ground that's right here uh, that comes off the back of this pigtail here, and it goes to there. So that's no longer there. The actual ground for that now is uh, is right there, as you can see there, coming into focus. The uh, wiring goes underneath the um, radiator support panel, comes up to this side. There's the secondary ground for the headlight and then it goes inside to the car um this out here is the uh horns already pre-pigtailed ready to go and the fan is in here there it is there that orange wire and we're actually i'm actually making a bracket now you can actually see the bracket i'm making uh now just two pieces of bent aluminum or aluminium um depending on what pronunciation you want to use uh, two of those, that'll hold the fan on, bolt that up, and the fan will come on for that. So we're going to assemble all this stuff, and we'll be back. All right, guys. So the um, we made the uh, radiator brackets, and that's how they look like. Uh, the Sorry, we made the radiator fan brackets. That's the clearance we've got on the front there. It doesn't look like a lot, but it's about half inch. Um, we've got it. All white in there. Okay, all the headlights are on. That's what they look like on. The bezel is on. Uh, I use a little bit of glue to hold this rubber into place because I use a little bit of glue to hold this rubber into place and then you just scrape off the uh, the glue after. A couple of washes, it's gone, but that's what it looks like. Got the grill in. That uh, um, grill with uh, the no bar on it. Doesn't look too, too bad, I guess. Uh, headlights are in. Don't forget, indicators and park lights are in the headlight. Love to show you. Maybe on the next video. Um, I showed you the uh, the horn wiring's done. Uh, all the wiring is done for the uh, fan. That's all hooked up. On the inside, man, a lot of work. We've hooked up the... Uh, it's got backup lights and for future backup lights, they're already hooked into the shifter up the top here. Uh, we've got the, um, just about everything uh, ready to go. These are all the lights that go for the cluster. It's a digital dash, so working out which, uh, working out the power for all the digital dash, bit of a nightmare. We've got all the wires under there. We're just gonna snap off those, um, just gonna cut off those, um, ties there but everything's nice and neat tucked up underneath there's still some tucking to do uh yeah it's come up really really well i started cleaning the back see how they're shiny the uh wind lacing i'm getting ready to put the wind the uh sorry the uh the bows see how clean the uh headliner bows are there those three i clean them up too uh got the back glass for this one they sent us uh the glass one was smoked and one was, uh, there it is there. One was smoked and one was, uh, there's the new smoke one. And there's the other smoke one. And there's the clear one. They sent us a clear one right there, clear. So, uh, yeah, they sent it. They had no problem sending them out. We didn't have to send it back. Why would you? Uh, so there it is there. There's the other smoke one there. So now we've got a spare there. Uh, all the harnesses out the back, like we said before. Getting there. All right, all right. Okay, guys, that is it for this week. Thanks for joining us again this week. Uh, please like, subscribe, 
and uh, yeah, a little bit more work on the 57. Tell you what, not long, and that's we're going to be complete with that one. So, uh, man, it's a long time coming. We've got another, other cars coming in. We've got a 56 Pontiac uh, Buick, 56 Buick coming in for some floor pan repairs. So, uh, be out, uh, be out. So, so be out on the lookout for that one there. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.